all right hello everyone so let's start solving differential equations using separation of variables method okay so this is my first example now what we want to do here is we want to write the right hand side of this differential equation as a product of a function of y times a function of x okay so how can we accomplish that well we can factor y out right so if we factor y out we get y times x minus 1 now if you look at this y is a function of y of course okay and then times you have a function of only x so we have a function of only y times a function of only x okay so here now we can deduce from here that the right hand side is separable right in fact this differential equation is separable because we can isolate each variable I mean isolate the variable y in the left hand side and isolate the variable x in the uh, right hand side okay so let's do that now we can take this y to the left hand side so if you do that we have to divide by y, y and let's take dx to the right hand side so it comes to the right hand side as multiplication okay so as you can see now y is isolated on the left hand side and the x is isolated in the right hand side so it's completely separated perfect now from here we can integrate so let's integrate if you integrate 1 over y with respect to y what we are going to get is natural log absolute value of y that's basic integration rules now if you integrate x with respect to x so it's going to be x square over 2 if you integrate minus 1 it's going to be minus x and we get the constant of integration let's call it c1 so c1 is an arbitrary constant all right perfect so it's it's good practice to write c1 is an arbitrary constant okay so i'm gonna save time in this video uh, writing in it in an ugly way okay but you should you can write it uh, the full sentence perfect now we have done the integration now actually you have already solved the differential equation now here's the point um, now you can you can write the final answer in two ways as you already know you can write the explicit solution or you can write the implicit solution now explicit solution means you have to write so what wh what we are looking for here is y y is the dependent variable right so explicit solution means the solution look like y is equal to you have everything else on the right hand side so you explicitly know what y is but right now what we have here is an implicit solution okay because we don't know explicitly what y e y e is okay all right so let's say that you have been asked to find the explicit solution so how can we accomplish this in this problem well we can take the e of the right hand side to make y subject because the base of natural log is e so it's going to be y is equal to e to the x square over 2 minus x plus c1 so this is the explicit solution now don't stop here let's we can do some simplification here now what we can do here is we can break this plus c1 we can write it as e to the x square over 2 minus 6 e to the c1 okay addition here means the multiplication in the base so really this is e to the c1 well c1 is an arbitrary constant so e to the c1 is an arbitrary constant so let's just call it well e to the c1 as c capital c okay it should be other way around well mm, okay so let's choose our c to be e to the c1 so c e to the x square over 2 minus x now this is the explicit solution all right now let's add something here let's say this is an initial value problem let's say with the differential equation they have given us an initial condition so this becomes an initial value problem so let's say this is the initial condition so we can use the initial conditions to find the constant so let's say y0 is 1 that's the initial condition so what this means is when x is equal to 0 y is 1 so let's substitute that into the solution y is 1 when x is equal to 0 so 0 over 2 is 0 0 minus 0 is 0 so this is c to the 0 right e to the 0 is 1 so this implies c is actually 1 right okay so the solution for the initial value problem because c is 1 this is the solution okay 
All right, so this is the final solution for the initial value problem. Why do we call it an initial value problem? Because we have a differential equation and an initial condition. All right, okay, so that's example one. Thank All right, hello everyone and welcome back. So now we wanna solve this differential equation using separation of variables, but it look a little bit weird, right? Because the differential equation that we used to have before was like dy over dx is equal to all the other stuff on the right hand side, right? But look at this differential equation. We have minus capital T on the left. Well, that's an easy fix because we can take that capital minus T to the right hand side by adding it. So it's going to be T minus seven. So it's an easy fix, but it's something that sometimes you might have to do if you want to use separation of variables. So let's identify this. Capital T is the dependent variable. Simple T is the independent variable. Now there's no real independent variable on the right hand side. So you might be confused. Um, you know how to separate the variables, but that's not a big deal because let's focus on this now t minus 7 at, at least t capital t should be on the left hand side right because that's the dependent variable we want to isolate all the capital t terms on the left and simple t terms on the right so he, here's something that you often do and something that's wrong so what you do here is you're quite nervous and you take capital t here and write the differential equation like this you all separate it like that that's wrong why is it wrong? Now think about this. T minus seven, that's an interesting relationship between T and seven. They are bonded together, okay? You cannot really break them apart. If you want to take that capital T to the left-hand side, you have to take T minus seven, the complete term into the left-hand side. I know then you leave confused because, well, there's nothing in the right-hand side. Well, actually there is you can think this as t minus seven times one, okay? So that, 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 that is sometimes a little bit tricky. So the correct separation here is, you have to take that t minus one, t minus seven, I'm sorry, to the left hand side, and it's just dt on the right hand side. No big deal, okay? All right, now let's integrate. So from here, it's easy. If you integrate one over t minus seven, it's going to be natural log absolute value t minus seven. If you integrate one with respect to simple t, it's simple t plus arbitrary constant c1, write it c1 as an arbitrary constant, okay, write that sentence. So let's find the explicit solution, t minus seven, if you take the e, it's e t plus c1. So you can write this as e t, oops, e t, e z1. Um, so e to the c1, you can write it as c, another arbitrary constant, so c e to the t we can take that minus seven to the right hand side. So this is the explicit solution, c e to the t plus seven. Okay, perfect. Now this is not just a differential equation. In fact, it is an initial value problem because we have an initial condition. So let's use that. So when simple t is equal to zero, capital T is 10. So that's what it says here, will hopefully help us to find capital C. So 10 equal to c e to the zero plus seven e to the zero is one so it's c plus seven so if you take seven to the left c is going to be let's see what three right perfect so the final solution is three e to the t plus seven simple enough okay all right so yeah that's the solution thank you very much bye bye